débat, the Honorable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, of course, I share with my colleagues the delight that uh, the third party in the House is sharing our concern about the way the Temporary Foreign Worker Program is being handled and are coming forward with a motion which in very closely resembles the one that we debated and we appreciated they supported uh, a week back. Um, but I would like to point out, Mr. Speaker, that uh, regrettably uh, their motion is missing a couple of critical factors which I have been raising in, in the House over the last month. Um, I'm pleased, Mr. Speaker, that the Liberal motion calls for, of course, immediate full review by the Auditor General, which the NDP has already called for. They speak about the need to disclose labour market opinion um, applications approvals and a tightening of the labour market opinion. But what is of concern, particularly to the workers in my province of Alberta, is the fact that the government has actually exempted the need for an LMO at all um, for, for the uh, oil sands sector and a lot of other sectors. And that, Mr. Speaker, is what is causing, I think, the greatest problem for that sector. Um, secondly, in addition to the fact that we need to have a return for the requirement to uh, state whether or not there's been an effort to even find Canadian workers and whether there is a shortage of workers, is there still, Mr. Speaker, is a complete absence of surveillance and enforcement in many sectors in Alberta. And uh, we are awaiting, the Iron Workers and I, a reply to the letter that we have sent to the Minister, and we're looking forward to uh, a reply forthwith. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, as I've sh shared with the Minister and with this place, the displacement of available, highly qualified Canadian workers with temporary foreign workers has been reported to be a recurring problem in the oil sands sector. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would advise that since I raised these issues, I am receiving letter after letter, phone call after phone call by other skilled Canadian workers who are fully qualified, who are also being displaced by temporary workers, and I will uh, deal with that shortly. But first of all, I want to reiterate the problems that have been brought to my attention and that I have shared with this place, raised by Canadian iron workers. Um, as I have previously uh, shared, Mr. Speaker, uh, 65 Canadian iron workers were laid off by Imperial Oil at their Pearl project and were replaced by temporary foreign workers. Secondly, prior to that, approximately 300 Canadian iron workers were laid off by Husky at their Sunrise oil sands project in northern Alberta. So clearly we have a pattern here where, and in fact, Mr. Speaker, it's important to point out it wasn't just the case that Canadian qualified iron workers were potentially available to be hired. In both of those cases, not only were they qualified and willing and able, they were on the job site and working and under contract to deliver the services to those two respective companies. Now, included within that, if that's not reprehensible enough, Mr. Speaker, included within those layoffs were Aboriginal apprenticeships, apprentices, who were then replaced by lesser qualified uh, individuals who were temporary foreign workers. And that is of deep concern because we hear time after time uh, this government of the day stating its strong support for uh, let's get uh, our Aboriginal peoples educated and get them into the trades and give them an opportunity to earn a decent income so that they can care for their families. Well, here we have an example where First Nation uh, young gentleman actually took the time to get educated, get the trade, and was in the course of being apprenticed and was laid off. And he has informed me directly that it took him a while to find another job. He has managed to find another job. But this is completely reprehensible. A second instance, uh, Mr. Speaker, I've been contacted by a female single parent iron worker who was also laid off. She, uh, among many women, had been encouraged to go back to school and become qualified in a trade to gain well-paying employment to provide for their families. Well, this is precisely what she did and then she was laid off surreptitiously and replaced by a temporary foreign worker. So, Mr. Speaker, um, I have been working closely with the iron workers to try to find out for them what problem is, what is the problem that's persisting in the oil sands sector and what is the minister going to do to intervene to make sure that this doesn't happen again and to make sure that enforcement action is taken against employers who have appeared to have violated the rules. 
Um, regrettably, um, there still has been no response by the minister. I attempted to try to get a reply today and he deflected uh, the question. What the minister has told us today is that last year he created a specific program integrity division in Service Canada. Now, Mr. Speaker, for those of us who might have worked in the enforcement world, we usually simply call those an inspectorate. And they're basically understand, understood to be specifically trained and qualified personnel, trained to go out and collect evidence, ask questions, uh, approach witnesses, and then to take appropriate enforcement action based on the circumstances. Usually there is a, a, a prescribed enforcement compliance strategy, which to be credible, would be developed in consultation with uh, workers, potentially unions, non-union workers, and the employers. Well, I keep persisting in asking this question, and thus far we're not hearing if that has occurred. We're not sure exactly who is in this program integrity division. But the obvious question uh, is, have any of these program integrity workers been deployed to the oil sands? Have they been specifically deployed to look into these instances of alleged abuses of the temporary foreign worker program. We are still waiting for a response and uh, the iron worker is regularly contact me and as I understand contacting the minister's office to find out if their concerns are being addressed. And I would like to reiterate Mr. Speaker very clearly that the Canadian iron workers hold no grudge against temporary foreign workers. They understand that uh, uh, persons in other countries are desperate for work, want to look after their own families they have no objection whatsoever for those workers coming to Canada. They, like us, would prefer that uh, they, like their families, would come to Canada through the usual immigration route and bring their families and have the opportunity to upgrade their standards and potentially join the unions even. Um, but even if they do come as temporary foreign workers, they do not begrudge them whatsoever and they're happy to work with them, so long as the employers do not try to displace them in their duly uh, qualified work or to pay these workers less, which will bring down the salary rate. So Mr. Speaker, um, a number of questions were put to the minister and I want to share with this place. These are the questions that we're asking the minister to respond to. How is it that Imperial Oil and Husky were allowed to replace qualified, willing and available Canadian iron workers with temporary foreign workers? Simple question. Secondly, are federal officers specifically mandated to inspect and enforce the temporary foreign worker program on oil sands operations? Another very straightforward question. Thirdly, more specifically, which federal officers and in what numbers are mandated to inspect and enforce this program in the oil sands? And in particular, Mr. Speaker, because of the fact that in Alberta there is a quote-unquote pilot program which has been further extended in time to allow uh, oil sands operations to bring on board temporary foreign workers without the need for an LMO. So there's absolutely no obligation on the employers to even show cause that there's a need to bring in temporary foreign workers, to show cause that in fact there is a shortage of, of skilled workers. Um, very critical issue. Um, if so, if so those officers are posted, um, why did they not identify these egregious abuses of the temporary foreign worker program? Uh, in both instances, these abuses of the displacement of Canadian skilled workers with temporary foreign workers was identified by the Canadian workers themselves. And uh, even today, Mr. Speaker, we noted that the Minister said he's pleased that even his own colleagues have brought to his attention some cases that need to be investigated. Well, we need clarity, Mr. Speaker. Is this an actual surveillance and enforcement program run by the government? Or is it simply the government sitting back and waiting to see if somebody's brave enough to file a complaint and hope that there's going to be some kind of response? An additional concern that uh, we have raised, Mr. Speaker, is what is the role being played by these labor brokers or headhunters? And what is the situation where you have these brokers bringing in both Canadian workers and temporary foreign workers? And in this situation where a broker has displaced uh, Canadian workers with temporary foreign workers. It's very, very important that these issues be addressed so that we can make sure that we have a steady supply of, of qualified Canadians. So just in closing, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I would just like again to share that I'm hearing case after case. I'm now hearing from uh, pipe fitters, boiler makers, concrete workers, and more iron workers who are being laid off and displaced by temporary foreign workers. I think that it is time to have a thorough review of this program, but I would add to that 
very strongly, Mr. Speaker, that it is not an excuse for this government to sit back and not uh, employ an effective surveillance and enforcement program. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Kestjoe Kamantai, the Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. So, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And again, uh, just uh, given the, the hour uh, and in anticipation of the vote, that we want to make it uh, perfectly uh, clear that uh, we, within the Liberal Party, want to ensure that uh, Canadians are first and foremost given the opportunity to get the jobs that are so critically important uh, to them. Um, we want to be able to, to recognize the importance of the temporary uh, worker uh, program and how it is that it's been of great benefit uh, to our uh, communities across our, our country if, and I underline the word if, Mr. Speaker, it is managed properly. And it's because of the mismanagement of the program that we find ourselves in the situation that we are today where we need to uh, have, amongst other things, Canada's Auditor General engaged in uh, this whole process so that we can attempt to, to restore or, uh, or establish uh, more public confidence uh, that we're moving in the, in the right direction. And my question uh, to the member is, which he uh, joined with us in acknowledging uh, that it is important that we get uh, recommendations coming from Canada's Auditor General in order to be able to uh, preserve uh, what would be a program that will continue then ultimately to enhance the quality of life uh, for all Canadians. Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I think it would be more appropriate to say it in reverse. Um, I and my colleagues are pleased that uh, the Liberal Party has come on board in endorsing our previous call for a review of this program by uh, Canada's Auditor General. Um, but additionally, uh, Mr. Speaker, I think that it's incumbent upon uh, that review that there also be close scrutiny of the efficacy of the surveillance and enforcement aspects of that program. Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank the Honourable Member for her comments today. I, I just wanted to know if the Honourable Member would acknowledge some of the steps the government has taken over the past months to try to tighten up this program and make sure that Canadians are always offered any job before it's offered to a temporary foreign worker. Steps like, as she mentioned, the, the integrity of the program. Uh, you know, we now have the ability to have integrity officers do on-site inspections uh, of any employer who has a temporary foreign worker to make sure that employer has, has obeyed the regulations that they agreed to when they applied for the program. Uh, expanding the amount of time that we have to have employers advertise before they have a temporary foreign worker. And, and of course, uh, other aspects that we've taken, other initiatives we've taken, to try to make sure that the program has tight regulations, that all Canadians are offered the jobs first, and also regulations which support temporary foreign workers so that they're not abused once they get here. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for his multifold question. Um, I would like to respond to the last part of the question, and I fully agree that we need to have in place stronger provisions to make sure that temporary foreign workers are not being abused. It was quite some time ago that a number of us have raised those issues in the House, and I myself have uh, organized meetings with local churches, with local business people who are deeply concerned about the abuses that they're finding to temporary foreign workers. On the matter of whether or not this government has stepped up to ensure that there's no abuses, well, Mr. Speaker, I wish that I could speak to that, but we're still waiting for the reply from the Honourable Minister. Uh, frankly, at this point in time, I have no idea if there's going to be better enforcement. The problem is they're not going to be able to scrutinize the LMOs for the oil sands because there aren't any. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Vancouver Kingsway. A short question, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, it's hard to be short on this issue. I, I guess I keep hearing the government saying that they believe it's important that Canadians be offered jobs first before TFWs are used. but. The, the problem, Mr. Speaker, is that there's been massive manipulation of this program all across this country. Iron workers remain unemployed while we bring in te temporary foreign workers. I just read an article today that this government allowed companies to bring in foreign pilots to fly aircraft in this country when there's uh, pilots in this country that can work. We have plumbers and pipe fitters across this country that remain unemployed. I've met with building trades in British Columbia who tell me they have many members who are ready, willing, and able to do the work. There was miners in British Columbia that sat idle while it, we brought in miners from outside the country. The problem is, is that employers are manipulating and misusing this, this program 
to get sources of cheap labor when there are Canadians who are here in this country who are ready and willing to do that work instead of those employers raising their wages and conditions to attract Canadians they don't want to do that and they're using cheap foreign labor to do this and I just want to ask a quick question uh, I noticed the leader of the Liberal Party has said that he believes there should be a path to permanent uh, residency for temporary foreign workers but when the Liberals were in government they brought in no such thing the New Democrats have been the only party calling for there to be a path for permanent residency of TFWs on the principle that if you're good enough to work here, you're good enough to live here. And I'm wondering if my honourable colleague will comment on that. The honourable member for Edmonton Strathcona, you have about 30 seconds. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. There's lots I'd like to comment on. First of all, yes, the Alberta Federation of Labour have documented hundreds of cases where temporary foreign workers are being paid less. And indeed, in the case of the oil sands, the jobs were offered first to Canadians, but then they were displaced by temporary foreign, foreign workers. Uh, indeed, I think that we've been clear on, on this side of the House that we would prefer is that, in fact, these workers are brought to Canada as actual immigrants. So, yes, we should be looking to those temporary foreign workers who have been offered that path towards citizenship. A lot of them are expressing great distress right now because they don't know what the fate of their application is because of this blanket uh, shutdown uh, of, their, of their employment.